Researchers at Cornell University have determined that we make about 226.7 decisions each day just on food alone. As your responsibilities in life, the people that count on you, your job, all of that increases, so does the amount of decisions that you make. And the average person makes approximately 35,000, yes, you heard me right, 35,000 at least remotely conscious decisions or choices every single day. And of course, every single one of those decisions has a consequence, good or bad. And as moms, I can only imagine that that number of 35,000 is probably a little low. It's honestly a little bit mind blowing to think about how many decisions we are making every day, how many at least remotely conscious choices we're making. And even more than the number of decisions that we're making, what I find the most fascinating, if you haven't heard about the Pareto Principle, it's basically the idea that 80% of the consequences come from 20% of the choices. So 80% of the outcome of things is actually only coming from 20% of the choices that you're making. And how that actually like plays out is simply to help you understand that it is a very, very, very small amount of those choices every day that actually have a large impact. So essentially, you are making thousands of decisions every day that don't actually have any significant impact. And I think we can all agree would probably make the most sense to spend as much of our conscious effort on those decisions, those 20% of decisions that are going to impact 80% of the outcomes. I'm sure you're thinking, okay, good Lord, that's a lot of decisions. Well, I guess I must be good at making them because I've just been making them. No, what happens is something called decision fatigue. It's something that happens, obviously, when you're making 35,000 plus decisions or choices every day, you're going to just, your brain is just gonna be like, I don't, I don't care anymore, I don't care. And that's pretty much exactly what happens. You start making irrational trade-offs, your brain starts trying to create shortcuts for decision-making, and when we start making shortcuts, we're not being as deliberate as we should be about some of those really important decisions. We're not always weighing out which are those 20% that actually are going to have an impact if we're trying to exert the same amount of brain energy on all of the decisions, and most of them, most of them, 80% roughly, don't really matter, they don't really have an outsized impact on anything in our life it's just wasted brain energy and I'm sure that I'm not alone in this we also start procrastinating decisions even important ones because our brains are just too tired to have to make one more decision today let's just sum this up really fast decision fatigue is basically when you have to make so many decisions in a day that as it goes on you just start making worse and worse decisions because your brain is just tired and doesn't want to have to make another one now you might be thinking I am just the bearer of bad news but I am not I do have a solution for you and that is that basically you want to make less decisions every day well how can you do that the answer is simple in that you need to be reducing the choices that you have to make every day I've spoken about this a number of times when it comes to other like mom advice videos or I've talked about the importance of meal planning and having routines and rhythms and things in your life that allow your brain to just go on autopilot and know what's coming next and not have to think about it and thus make a decision. Things like setting up routines, rhythms, uh, making choices ahead of time as best as you can, almost like block deciding things, and even having the most important decisions that you're making happen earlier in the day. That's a subject we could dive deeper in in another video. Why I'm telling you this, because I'm sure you're thinking, what does this have to do with my clothes? Well, hello, how many times have we all stood like a naked mole rat in our closet with our hair soaking wet, looking at our abundance of clothing and feeling completely overwhelmed by our choices and not really knowing what to wear? We get kind of this paralysis, we often end up not wearing the majority of the clothing that we have, and it just causes a lot of added stress and things that we have to think about every day, decisions we have to make, like what's the weather and what do I have to do today and should I wear this? Well, I am going to be doing that later. So listen, I'm going to change your life right now. I don't know, it's like one of those infomercial call-in things where I'm like, I'm going to change your life right now. Well, I, I kind of am though. So how does this apply to clothing? I feel like it's pretty obvious that this definitely applies to clothing. 
You want to be able to pull something out of your closet to wear that you know you're gonna feel good in, you know is going to fit you, and you know will be comfortable and sort of meet the needs of your day. Now I'm approaching this from a mom perspective, from pretty much a stay-at-home mom, homeschooling mom perspective. So there are lots of different angles and ways to look at this. This is the way that I am going to give you the sort of three easy ways to do this. You're welcome to like flex it for whatever your life situation is if it doesn't fall into that stay-at-home mom homeschooling category. I'm making the case for a mom uniform. This is not new, I didn't develop this idea. It's been around for some time. But I will go ahead and raise my hand and admit to being the person who perhaps has rolled their eyes or just immediately brushed off the idea of a mom uniform as something that I could never get behind because I like clothes, I like fashion, and I just have always felt like, well, that would only work if you're a minimalist or you have a very minimal wardrobe. The idea of a mom uniform was something that I didn't even give a lot of weight to even looking into because I just made assumptions about what that would mean and I wrote it off. Fast forward to recently where I have been testing out a lot of different things in my life to make changes that kind of go against my grain, go against my natural proclivity to be a certain way or do a certain thing, and challenging myself to step outside of my comfort zone as far as what I think will work best for me. And I can see for myself how having to make decisions every day about what I'm wearing it eats up a lot of my brain space that quite frankly feels ridiculous and I know that it is not part of the 80% of outcome that like really matters, okay? Nobody gives a rip, right, but me. But it's still a decision that I find myself making and humming and hawing about and then guilt comes in because well, I haven't worn that thing and I bought that thing and oh look, that still has tags on it. Ah. It's a spiral, okay? It's a spiral. That caused me to leap further into understanding the idea of a mom uniform and how it can be beneficial to me. And in this research and in this testing and trying, I feel like I have really sort of seen the light in how this can be incredibly beneficial. And if any of this that I'm talking about is resonating with you, if you're like, oh boy, that's me, I would urge you just to give this a try. So what even is a mom uniform? Well, basically it's this idea that at least that Monday through Friday, you don't have to think about what you are wearing. You create a uniform for yourself so you know when you get up, this is what you are wearing. Now, the strictness of that uniform is totally up to you. Um, you can start off very strict, and we'll talk about this at the end when I kind of go through some of my tips for you guys, but you don't have to stay that way. You can start strict to see how that feels. Um, and then you can kind of ease up a little bit if you want, or if the strictness just feels very overwhelming, which was kind of how it was for me, then I, I didn't start out as strict. What would be something that would be a mom uniform? Am I talking about like we're dressing like a Target employee, we're wearing khaki pants and a red top every single day? No, though if you wanted to, that could be your uniform. There's no rules here, my friends, there's no rules. So when you start thinking about what would make a good mom uniform for yourself, you obviously need to take a few things into consideration, um, your lifestyle, the expectations of you every day, where you need to go every day. You kind of need to take a sort of broader picture of what's going on in your life because you really want to try to create a mom uniform that is very versatile for what is going on. It may be very tempting to go for the absolute like coziest thing in your closet, which quite frankly is probably like pajamas, but the reality is it's not probably gonna be the best idea for pajamas, pajamas, however you wanna say it, to be your uniform. And also, if you are someone like myself, then feeling put together is also an important layer for me. It may not be for you, but it is for me. I don't wanna feel like a slob and so I want my mom uniform to be reflective of that that I feel put together because it's just part of sort of inner confidence and also how I feel that, quite frankly, I'm respectful to those around me, that I show respect to people that I might encounter. I just, I like showing up as my best self. That doesn't mean you're overdone, fully hair and makeup glam self. It just means you're showing up in a way that feels very presentable and authentic to you, shows the other person that I care enough to put a bra on and get out of my house robe. That's all. I'm not here to tell you what that should be. I'm gonna give you some ideas, but whatever might be springing to mind, scratch it down right now as you're thinking this through. And it really is an excellent first step to start with being very brutally honest with yourself about 
what you feel confident in, what you feel is comfortable. The coziest thing you own is maybe not going to be the, the correct item given all the other factors, but something that's comfortable, something you feel confident in, and what are your actual favorite pieces to wear from your wardrobe? Now, I know there's some of you probably sitting there right now thinking, I hate everything in my closet. I have no favorite things to wear. I would love to apply this, but I hate everything. I would urge you, if you feel like you just look in your closet and you're like, I hate everything, head over to Pinterest, okay? What I want you to do when you go there is start looking at, if you already have fashion board style boards pinned, start looking through those boards and seeing if you can pick out a theme, anything that you see kind of running through a lot of the pictures that you pin. And if you don't have these boards, that's fine. You can just start with basic search terms like, comfortable mom outfits, mom outfit ideas, things like that. Um, any keywords that you kind of know about yourself, maybe if you are a classic dresser, so you could put like classic mom style or something, and then start creating a board from there. But you wanna start kind of looking through and pulling out the things that you can identify that kind of flow through all of that. So are you loving like skirts and dresses? Are you really more of a jeans kind of a girl? Are you more of a legging and like really comfortable or like athleisure type wear? You know, whatever is kind of the theme that's running through the outfits that you're choosing, I would kind of start there in piecing together a wardrobe for this. You can be really strict with this if the idea of wearing essentially the same thing every day is very like freeing and liberating to you and you're like, oh, finally I don't have to think about clothing, I hate it then absolutely be very strict with this. You can literally say, I wear this pair of jeans. I have the exact same pair of jeans. I have two of them or three of them. I rotate these exact same pair of jeans and a black t-shirt every single day. That is my uniform. I know I read a book. I'm not gonna remember the name off the top of my head, unfortunately. Oh, The Lazy Genius Way. Thank you, Brain. So sweet. I believe in that book she spoke about wearing jeans and a black t-shirt is like her uniform. Uh, so if you wanna be that strict with it, that's one absolutely way that you can go. If that strictness feels too much, then you can kind of ease it back and say, okay, I'm going to wear, maybe I have like a light colored pair of denim, a dark and a medium colored pair of denim. I'm gonna take these three pairs of jeans, I'm gonna rotate through these during the week for my outfits, and then choose a top, maybe it's not a color of top, but it's a style of top, a button up for example. So I'm going to choose from these five button ups and these three pairs of pants every single day, Monday through Friday. This leaves fun for the weekend, um, fun for Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, if you're going out and doing fun stuff, you could wear other clothes that are in your closet. You don't have to, you can stick with the uniform. Sunday, going to church, and maybe you don't wear dresses during the week, but on Sundays you wear dresses. Great, that's totally fine. Um, so don't feel, and this is where I got trapped, feel like this is meant to make you feel trapped. You can still have your freedom of expression in your fashion on specific times, but when you know that you are gonna be home cleaning up, doing dishes, doing homeschool, run into the car line, go into the grocery store, meeting up with some mom friends at the park. There's absolutely no reason in that lifestyle that you can't have a uniform that works for you. I have kind of three mom personas that I've come up with to help you figure out what your mom uniform might look like. I've got the effortless mom, the fit mom, and the fashionista mom. The effortless mom, this is basically taking a very simple outfit and something that you can still feel very chic in. So for me, this would look like choosing my favorite pair of denim. Uh, for example, these A Goldie jeans that I have that I absolutely love. I have them in two colors. They are very comfortable, they fit me no matter what time of the month it is. You know what I'm saying? I would then choose tops for those five jeans. Now, you can go for all one color. Now, that wouldn't be something that would be appealing to me, but if you have a certain style of t-shirt, for example, let's just say you really love like the Old Navy Lux tees or something, then you could buy that same tee in five different colors. And so every day you wake up and you know that you're putting on your denim, and one of those five Lux tees. The other thing that you could do is to do graphic tees. If you don't wanna do just any one color or any one style necessarily, like just you know one cut of t-shirt in different colors, you could just go with a theme of like graphic tees. So every day you know that you are waking up and you are putting on denim from these two or three pairs, whatever it is that you have, and graphic tees. 
Now, my sort of preferred way is denim and button-ups. I think that button-up shirts are classic. I think they make you look like you tried way harder than you did. And by this point, we probably all know that my mantra is maximum impact for minimal effort. And to me, a classic button-up it's something that I can literally slick back my greasy hair and put on some oversized sunglasses, jeans and a button up, and you honestly look like you tried when you really didn't at all. To me, that's sort of like the perfect epitome of a mom outfit is choosing my favorite two pairs of denim, two or three pairs of denim, and grabbing a handful of my button ups and having those be what I choose from every single day. If you are in the fit mom persona, if you're kind of falling more in that category, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're like, oh, I'm fit, I work out every day. I'm just talking to the moms who really like to wear athleisure wear on the daily for whatever reason. If denim is just not even remotely comfortable to you, or maybe the kind of denim that you love is a really rigid denim, so you know you don't wanna wear that all day every day, that wouldn't make a good mom uniform. If you have and can put together a sort of five outfits from that, if you've got like two pairs of leggings to rotate through and two pairs of like joggers, uh, especially like I have my favorite Amazon leggings and Amazon joggers, just getting like two pairs of each of those and having those be the bottom, so that's what you're rotating through uh, every day during the week, and then a top that works with those. That's obviously gonna be different for everybody. Maybe you wanna wear just like black leggings, more, you know, more of that style with like a tunic style top, uh, something that's just long and comfortable, but it's not athleisure wear. I'm still putting that in the fit mom category because you're still wearing like leggings with some kind of top. So it's actually very simple. Uh, you just kind of have to know yourself and know what is most comfortable to you, what will make you feel good, but be very, very simple for you to even set aside in your wardrobe every day. And again, by the way, you could still match the button-ups. If you're a leggings kind of person, you could do leggings with the button-up tops. Um, it doesn't have to be button-ups and denim. You could do, absolutely do, like you've got your comfy favorite pair of black leggings and you know, you've know you just got three pairs of them. Rotate through those with button-ups. Again, you're still getting that like impact of looking more put together, but you're comfortable, it's easy. The third persona is the fashionista. This is where, if all of this sounds way too overwhelming, I might recommend starting here. This is where I kind of have like looked at this in a little bit of a different way. So instead of saying, I'm going to wear just this pant and just this type of top, if you are the fashionista mom and that's just way too hard, you have too much clothing that you love to wear, you've got all this comfortable stuff that works, it's just honestly your decisions are, I have too much stuff that I love so I don't know what to wear kind of a thing. Then where I would recommend starting is once a week, so maybe on Sunday evenings, you go into your closet and you go ahead and you pick your five outfits for the week, you pull them out and maybe push everything else in your closet to like one side and you have your spot where you hang your five outfits for the week. You are predetermining what you are wearing this week. If it still feels overwhelming, start with like theme weeks, as dumb as that sounds. Like this week, I'm gonna wear skirts. So I'm gonna pick my five outfits based on outfits that I have that are like a cute skirt and a top that goes with it. So all week, that's what I'm wearing is skirts. There's still ways that you can make this work even if you have a larger wardrobe that you really do wanna wear every day and you don't want to just kind of wear the same mom uniform. I think it's a great way to like dip your toes in the water of it because I do think that when you realize the freedom it gives you to make less choices and how that is honestly just a saving grace to you every day, you might even become more inclined to like dwindle down and be a little bit more strict during the week. Now again, you can carry this all seven days, but it's gonna be very different for everybody depending on their lifestyle, but I think there's absolutely a way to implement a mom wardrobe for every mom out there. As we wrap up my case for the mom uniform, I wanna share with you guys just a few tips and things to think about as you are creating this or trying this out. The first thing is that you're not signing a contract. There's no blood oath. You don't have to give your firstborn to a bridge troll if you change your mind. It's totally fine to go back and say, okay, I tried this, this didn't really work for me. I need to make some tweaks. Maybe there's something in your schedule or life that you didn't think about when you laid out your outfits and you thought you were gonna to be totally fine to be the fit mom all week. And then you realize that, oh no, every 
Thursday and Tuesday, I have to go here and it's not a place that I feel like I can wear my athleisure clothes. So you need to, you know, kind of change that mom uniform. You can totally be flexible. What can you add? What can you take away? What's working for you? What isn't? If it doesn't work for you, you can make changes. You don't have to just completely stop doing it. You can figure out, you know, ways to make it still work for you. My next tip would be if you find something that you really like and that is comfortable, there's no shame in just owning multiple of that thing, maybe in different colors, even if it's not in different colors, right? Like those Amazon black leggings that I love. I don't need to just force myself to choose other colors because it feels like I'm doing something wrong to have four pairs of those exact same leggings. There's no rules. If that's what will work for you for your mom uniform, go for it. These um, Steve Madden sandals that I shared with you guys recently in a favorites video, I now own them in two colors and I pretty much just rotate through the tan and black every single day um, because they work with my mom uniform. One of those two colors works and fits. They're very, very comfortable and they do still kind of look put together. They've got the little gold accents and they work with my mom uniform really, really well. So if you've got you know New Balance tennis shoes that you love and you want to own them in black, white, and tan to kind of coordinate with all your colors, that's fine. The idea is that you are waking up every single day and letting go of the stress of trying to pick something to wear, feeling like, well, I should wear this or I wanna wear this, but it's not really comfortable. In order for the mom uniform to work, it really needs to be something that is very simple, uh, versatile for your life and what you've got going on. It needs to be comfortable, something you feel really good in. I think we all can almost like fantasize about what it would feel like to wake up every day and put on an outfit that we just feel really good in. We feel confident, uh, we're comfortable, and it's like, we almost feel like we, we are not allowed that. Like we're women, so we must suffer with our fashion. We must you know loathe the outfits that we wear, force ourselves into things that even if they're comfortable, we feel like a slob in them. There's a way to marry those things together so that you can feel put together and confident while also being comfortable and being able to go about your day and think about other things, save the mental energy for more important decisions. What we're wearing is, perhaps one of the least important decisions that we make in a day, though to us it can feel really important and it can have an outsized impact on almost like your mental health and the way you feel about yourself, your confidence, all of that can be affected. So it may seem like a trivial thing, like, oh, who cares, just put on clothes. The reality is, is that's not the impact that it has for many women. And so I think it's important to recognize both, that we can simplify, and that our feelings are pretty valid when it comes to wanting to be confident, but feel good in our skin and feel good in what we're wearing. And I really believe that the mom uniform is the bridge that we need here. It is the bridge to bridge those gaps and allow us to be a little less mentally exhausted every day with the decisions, but still feel confident and comfortable. So with that said, I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that you have heard me plead my case for the mom uniform, and I would love to know if you decide to try it. Absolutely tag me on social media. Let me see your mom uniform. Show me what you've come up with for your mom uniform. I'll be sharing some of mine along the way as I'm tweaking mine and making it work better for me, but I would love to see what y'all do if you decide to do this, or maybe you're already doing it and you're like, I've been on this train for two years. Great. Share it with me. I'd love to see it. So that is it for me today, you guys, and I will see you again very soon.